These days, the Detroit rap scene is on top of the world. People from all different sides of the city, as well as surrounding cities like Flint and Ypsilanti are seeing success, and the state of Michigan as a whole has one of the strongest movements in all of rap. But 10 years ago, Detroit was miles away from the mainstream, and 20 years ago, the city wasn't even an afterthought when it came to hip hop music. But as early as the 90s, a movement was forming, and throughout the years, more and more artists pushed it further until it got to the point it's at today. So in this video, we'll take a look at everything that had to happen for Detroit to get where it's at today. Detroit has a rich rap history, stretching back to the 90s when rappers like Isham and his group Natas, ICP, Kid Rock, and D12 originally put Detroit rap on the map. These are some of the pioneers of rap music in the D, especially Isham. They were critical with getting rap started, but when it comes to what Detroit rap has become known for in the present day, the city's current success is tied to its unique sound that emerged in the late 90s and early 2000s. Detroit beats can be described as dark and up-tempo, with melodies typically containing pianos, strings, and bells, and a combination of funk bass and 808s. If you go back and listen to Detroit music from the late 90s and early 2000s, you can hear the similarities to the current sound. The early Detroit sound drew from a variety of different influences. Detroit techno music was popular in the city through the late 80s and 90s, and this genre played a big role in influencing the production of the early years of the Detroit rap sound, most notably the extremely fast tempos. There's also a large amount of similarities between the sound of the Bay Area and Detroit that stretch all the way back to this late 90s period. Though there is some controversy on who originated it, Detroit legends like Payroll Giovanni and Hell of a Beats have acknowledged that they were inspired by the Bay. Payroll Giovanni has also credited groups like Cash Money and No Limit and the Louisiana Sound as another inspiration for early Detroit rap. And to this day, there are still certain sounds that you mainly only hear in Louisiana and Detroit music. During this period when the Detroit sound was first emerging, there were two major groups in the city, who most of the older current Detroit rappers credit as the originators of the Detroit sound we know today. The Street Lords, who initially started as the Cheddar Boys, and the East Side Cheddar Boys, who followed using the Street Lords' original name. The Street Lords were from the west side of Detroit, while the East Side Cheddar Boys were obviously from the east. Both groups became superstars in the city and the faces of Detroit rap. However, in the ego-driven sport of hip-hop, it takes virtually nothing at all to start a conflict, and these two groups ended up getting into a beef over the Eastside Cheddar Boys taking the Street Lords' original name. A beef that would set the trend in Detroit of the East Side versus the West Side. Unfortunately, this beef over what started as a small disagreement took a serious turn when Wipeout, the leader of the Street Lords, ended up losing his life to violence. Eastside Cheddar Boy Associates blamed the Street Lords and ended up spinning back and taking the life of Blade Icewood, the leader of the Street Lords, and the most beloved rapper in the entire city. This tragic set of events destroyed the momentum in the city. Both groups faded out and there was a void until another group called Doughboys Cash Out started making noise. Doughboys Cash Out was a group of kids from the west side who formed their group while they were still in high school. Their most notable members were Payroll Giovanni and HBK. They put out their first mixtape in 2008 and soon they were very well known throughout the city. Doughboys Cash Out was kind of like a revival for the D. During the late 2000s, Eminem was the mainstream representation of Detroit. Acts associated with them, like D12 and Royce the 5'9 were seeing success, and Big Sean was coming up as well. But all of these rappers had a different wave and didn't embody the Detroit sound. The streets didn't have any representation. Doughboys Cash Out filled this void and brought a new young energy. 
They continued the legacy of up-tempo, dark beats with hard piano melodies and funk basses. One of the producers Doughboy's Cash Out worked with was named Helleva, and he would go on to produce major hits and play a huge role in creating the modern Detroit sound. Doughboy's Cash Out went on to attract attention from outside the city and eventually ended up signing to Jeezy's label CTE in 2013. But they never reached the mainstream and eventually went their separate ways. However, during this early 10s era, more groups began popping up. The two biggest were Team Eastside and The Green Guys. The Green Guys were a group of rappers from the Eastside who assembled and made a name for themselves in the early 10s. The most notable member was Icewear Bezo. Team Eastside was a group that included rappers PZ, Babyface Ray, and Dame Dot. Bezo, PZ, and Ray would all remain consistent names leading the Detroit scene for the next 10 years. Ray, PZ, and Bezo were also associated with another rapper from the same area as them known as GT, who wasn't a member of either group but collaborated with them frequently while doing his own thing. Other hot names around this time were the Stun Hard Hot Boys, a solo rapper named Pablo Skywalking, and All Stars Ball Hard, a group that T Grizzly was a part of in his younger years before his big break, as well as All Star JR and several other members. By this time, the Detroit sound had solidified into its own wave and the Green Guys, Team Eastside, and Doughboys Cash Out were still pushing it further. However, the theme of East versus West rivalries would flare up again in the form of a beef between Doughboys Cash Out and Team Eastside and the Green Guys. The beef turned violent in a situation that resulted in the Green Guys running into HBK of the Doughboys, jumping him, knocking him out, and taking his chain. Luckily, this was the farthest the beef went, and everybody was able to squash things and even collaborate on songs in the future. In the mid-10s, the influence of drill music was being felt, and rappers like Ye Ye Jordan and Dex Osama were two of the hottest rappers in the D, mixing drill elements with the traditional sound. However, things ended up badly for both of these rappers. Dex Osama ended up losing his life to violence, and Ye Ye caught a 33-year sentence. It was also in the mid-10s that a group called Bang Gang emerged into the spotlight in the city. Bang Gang was a group of friends from the west side of Detroit, with some of the biggest members being Biggs, Lonnie Bands, Paid Will, and Mazo. The city loved Bang Gang and they quickly became the hottest group out, but in future years, many of their members would be plagued by prison time and death. Another rapper who blew up during this time was Cash Kid. Cash Kid brought a sense of humor to his music, as well as witty bars and punchlines, and this set him apart from a lot of others on the scene. The biggest rapper from Detroit to blow during this time was Dej Loaf, with her extremely viral hit, Try Me. But she had a different sound and was separate from the main Detroit movement. Similarly, Danny Brown took off with a very different sound to anything else coming out of Detroit. Now, up until this point, Detroit had developed its own music scene with a unique style and sound and its own stars. People like Big Sean and Dej Loaf managed to see mainstream success, but none of the rappers using the Detroit sound were known outside of Michigan and the surrounding areas. However, in 2017, all of this changed. T Grizzly, a rapper from the previously mentioned All Stars Ball Hard group, had just got out of prison and decided to take rap seriously. He got a beat from Helleva and dropped a song called First Day Out and the rest is history. The song went crazy and T Grizzly became the first Detroit rapper to blow up with the Detroit sound. There was now a wider audience outside the city who had been introduced to the sound and were looking for more. As a result, new artists started coming out and gaining buzz. One of these new artists who T Grizzly would end up signing was Sada Baby. Sada Baby's unique style set him apart and he started gaining notice with the song called Stacy. He continued to blow up, dropping hits like 2K17 and Block Party, growing a large fan base. In addition to Sada, there were several other rappers seeing success. FMBDZ, an artist from the west side, had several big records taken off. 
Snap Dogg, another rapper from West Detroit, began blowing up with a more drill influenced sound and ended up signing to Lil Durk. GT began hitting his stride as an artist, releasing several big songs and doing numbers. Drago and Bino, two rappers who formed the new duo, were on a roll with several of their songs racking up millions of views. All-Star JR, who had got caught up in the same case as T Grizzly, was released around the same time and quickly able to get back to rapping and build a buzz in the city. Molly Brazy, one of the few female artists repping the Detroit sound, began doing major numbers with songs of her own like Trust None, More Facts, and multiple collabs with Cuban Doll all racking up millions of views on YouTube, leading to her becoming arguably the second biggest rapper in the city. One artist in particular from this period who would go on to see more success than basically everybody else was 42 Doug. In 2017, Doug came home and started rapping. Things took off quickly and by 2018, he was one of the hottest up and coming artists in the city. Cash Doll also blew up around this time but similarly to Big Sean and Dej Loaf, she had a different sound and was separate from the main Detroit rap movement. I'm hell, delayed my flight. Me and TJ had a show in, Miami. Go to tonight. in 2019, Detroit had another big year and a new genre of Detroit rap blew up. Scamming and credit card fraud had been popular in Detroit for years. Band gang started the trend of rapping about it in songs and smaller artists had started making it into a genre. In 2019, TJX6 and Kasha Kwan blew up and took scam rap to new heights with their song Dynamic Duo. TJ capitalized on this new clout, dropping hits like Dark Web and Blackmail. He dropped songs literally reading out methods over beats, as well as giving detailed stories about swiping, probably saying more information than he should have. In addition to TJ and Kasha Kwan, 30 minutes away, a group called the Shitty Boys was also on the scam rap wave. The Shitty Boys was a group of three friends from Ypsilanti, Michigan, who started rapping in high school, with the star of the group being Babytron. They didn't go into detail like TJ, but they talked about scamming and used a lot of the lingo, mentioning things like punches, slides, dumps, bends, and profiles. They weren't as viral as TJ86, but 2019 was still a good year for them and they dropped several big songs that blew them up on the scene. This same year, a West Side Detroit artist known as Baby Smooth was blowing up off his own unique, laid back and low effort style of rap, dropping hits like Acorn and Bait. V's, another rapper from the same area as Baby Smooth, was also building a following of his own in Detroit, dropping some of the earliest hits of his career including songs like Rusty and Heart Insurance. On a separate wave away from the Detroit sound, Bodie James was beginning to see his music get recognition, signing with West Side Gun, and blowing up in the underground. This same year, a Flint rapper called Rio the Young OG dropped a song called Legendary and blew up, taking the game by storm, continuing to do numbers, and establish himself as a top rapper in Flint and one of the biggest in Michigan, period. Taking arcs and pouring codeine and star phones. I keep a cup of lean on me, don't wanna die alone. In 2020, more rappers from Flint followed Rio and put a new spotlight on the city. RMC Mike was Rio's right-hand man and they collaborated frequently, so Mike began to grow a following as well. YNJ and Louis Ray made a name for themselves with songs like Coochie, Coochie Land, and Triple S bringing humor and a unique style to their raps. BFB the Pac-Man blew up off his song Free Joe Exotic, saying the wildest imaginable things you could ever say on a song. Lastly, Crispy Life Kid, a rapper closely associated with Rio and Mike, was appearing on a lot of big songs at the time, making a name for himself as well. All of these rappers got most of their beats from a producer named Energy, who can be credited for playing a large role in the new style that was emerging. In 2020, Flint was having its own mini movement and the Detroit movement at large was bigger than it had ever been before. Rappers like Babyface Ray, I Swear Vezo, and PZ, who were almost a decade into their careers, were the biggest they had ever been. Sada Baby was continuing to drop new hits and surpass his old songs, and 42 Doug had signed with Lil Baby and ascended all the way to the mainstream. 
On top of this, there were new artists like FWC Big Key and Skilla Baby starting to be noticed in the city. The Detroit sound was known all across the country, and in 2021, Lil Yachty decided to put even more light on the scene when he dropped Michigan Boy Boat, an album with mostly Detroit beats featuring the majority of the popular artists at the time. 2021 was also big for GMO Stacks, another rapper coming out of the west side of Detroit. From 2022 to 2024, the Michigan movement continued to get even bigger. Babytron initially made his name in the 2019 scam rap wave, but in 2022, he blew up on a much bigger scale, dropping projects like Ben Reaper 3 and Megatron, getting nationwide attention. Skilla Baby also saw an explosion in his career, dropping tracks like Tay B Style and Icky Vicky, pulling millions of views. This same year, Baby Money, a rapper from the west side of Detroit, began taking off and became the first Detroit artist to sign with QC. In 2023, V's emerged as the biggest new star coming out of Michigan, dropping his hit single G.O.M.D., which he followed up with his debut album Ganger, and then the deluxe version, which contained more hits like Not A Drill and Get Lucky. 2023 also saw the rise of a new Flint artist called Babyface E, who quickly started building a buzz on the scene. This brings us to the present day. From the early 90s to the early 20s, the Detroit rap scene went from being completely invisible to nearly everyone outside of city limits to one of the biggest movements in hip hop. New Detroit rappers are blowing up every year and Detroit beats are being used across the country. Artists in the city used to feel disrespected and excluded from mainstream hip hop, but they stayed true to themselves and continued to grind and eventually the world noticed.